yesterday. We all know how easy it can be for a simple conversation to just spiral out of control when you talk politics. For sure. And at a time when our country feels more polarized than ever before, it can be really tough to keep the peace. Joining us now is author, former Marine, and a mental toughness expert, Eric Ritimer, who says it's possible to have an open discussion on politics without losing friends. It is? I'm yeah, shocked. Yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't aware of this either, guys. Yeah. I don't know. You guys, this is the first time I'm hearing this. I guess we can have a discussion. I think it's, it's crazy. crazy. We, we just live in this time where we just, you know, we can't accept opposing points of view. We automatically get angry with people. But there is a path to peace here. And it all starts with becoming better listeners. We're horrible. We're horrible listeners, especially the guys. I mean, let's admit it. The guys are horrible Thank listeners. You. We listen with the intent to reply, not with the intent to understand. We have to get better at listening. I see you nodding your head over there too, Joe. I got you. Uh, I was going to say, man, you're setting me up here. This is not going to end well. Um, one of the tips, though, that you give for having a discussion with those we disagree with, no, I'm kidding, is to suspend our disbeliefs. What exactly do you mean by disbeliefs and how do you go about suspending them? When we enter into conversations with people that we know we're going to have conflicting points of view with, Joe, we have to know that we don't have to agree with what someone else is saying, but we have to be willing to at least accept their point of view and let them feel like we're hearing them. If we have a belief about something, we have to get better at setting that aside. It's called compartmentalization. Compartmentalize that feeling, set it aside, give that person an open mind. At the end of the day, we're probably not going to agree on it, but at least we make them feel like we understood where they were coming from. Mm -hmm. And you suggest taking time to respond as opposed to just reacting. Uh, what is the difference between the two and how much time are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, so you talk about that take some breaths, right? It's yeah. like serenity now, serenity now. <laughs> when we react, it's normally a knee jerk. It's an emotion based. Anytime we interact with somebody, what initially follows that interaction is going to be emotion based. We're either happy, sad, angry, fearful, or shameful. When we react, we respond to that emotion. When we respond, we take time. We process information logically, and we, we formulate a response that's not going to be fueled emotion. We're thinking logically at that point. Yeah, I think that's such a great thing for everyone to understand the difference between reacting and responding. And if you actually take a moment to consciously mm -hmm. think about it, you can make small changes that would certainly help in situations like this. But should you tell people, like, hold on a second, I need to really process this like, before take some time. I can respond? It's, it's being prepared, Gina. When you go in these situations, it's being prepared, knowing if you're going to be dealing with people that have opposing points of view. Go in there mentally prepared. It's like my Marine Corps training. We train, we train, we constantly put ourselves in situations. So when we're put in there in real life, we've already been through it in our mind. We've already systematically desensitized our brains. It's being prepared, knowing there's going to be people that are going to push our buttons. And mm -hmm. when, when it comes to pushing buttons, uh, <laughs> if somebody does end up pushing them and then kind of hijacking our emotions, are there any tips to get back to getting things under control or kind of save the situation before it gets really bad? Getting back is difficult to do, Joe. That's why we have to be proactive when we enter in these situations. We have very little control over pretty much anything out there right now. What we do have 100% control over are our emotions, are our feelings. Although we can't prevent what's happening to us, we can prevent what's happening within us. We can control mm -hmm. how we respond. We have to stay ahead of that. Once we allow ourselves to get drunk in emotion, we're intoxicated at that point. We're incapable of logical Ooh, thought. I oh, I like that. Wow. Joe, I hope you've been taking notes. I Eric, we appreciate yes. you and you taking the time to talk to us. Us. Helpful advice. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later. <laughs> I Thanks. love your dress too, by the way, Gina. I love your dress. Oh, thanks. thanks. Guys. <laughs>